Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is going to be uh, in the greenhouse. It's a little bit on the chilly side today. I was hoping because it's the weekend and because I'm home and I had planned on doing this today, I was hoping that it'd be warmer. Sorry, I'm trying to fix my crazy hair. <laughs> I lost my hair tie as soon as I came in here and I'm just like looking for it and I can't find it. So I am actually going to be doing what they call chitin potatoes. That's with the CH, <laughs> not a SH. Um, and basically what it is, is you're gonna be taking your seed potatoes um, and you're gonna cut them so that you basically get more potatoes. Um, I'm not gonna kind of do like a how to really because there's a lot more better info videos out there. Um, I just figured I would do this while talking to you guys about um, some plans, some future stuff happening, and um, getting ready to plant in the garden. Spring is coming. I can feel it, although it is just like, still feels really cold outside. <laughs> like today, yesterday was really nice, um, although it started to get a little windy. Today is just kind of overcast and ugly. Um, if you guys didn't know, I am in Southern California, but we have just had some like crazy storms lately. We had a little bit of snow. We had some rain. I have been collecting rainwater as much as I can. I actually have two pretty good sized trash cans full of water that I'm just going to be using um, to water my seedlings and to water, you know, my garden as much as I can, as long as I can. So, um... What I plan on doing with these potatoes, I did get these uh, certified seed potatoes from Tractor Supply. Um, I've never bought seed potatoes before. This is actually my very first time going to plant potatoes. So it's going to be a learning experience and I plan on sharing that with you guys, like um, the outcome. And I'm kind of just taking what I've learned, my research and going from there. Um, from what I've read and seen from other YouTubers, um, you can take the whole seed potato and plant it right in the ground and you will get a yield. Um, but from what they're saying is that you probably won't get as many or not as big a potato. So, you know, that's why people chit them to, I guess, get bigger yields and, uh, a healthier looking potato. So you're going to take the potato. I don't know if you guys can see it. And then you're going to try to cut and divide them as much as possible, leaving the eyes as kind of like your root quote unquote. Um, so that's what I'm going to try to do here. <laughs> Again, this is my first time and you can do it as much as you can. I'm going to see if I can do this without ruining them. So this one has a few of the eyes and then you just leave them out so that they can dry um, and heal over before you plant them in the ground because you don't want to plant a mushy raw potato because then you're going to have, um, you know, mushy stuff to put in the ground. So, so you have to leave them out to dry for... I'm going to assume a week, but depending on where you live, I live in a very dry climate, so it probably will not take these very long to heal over. Um, and then you put them in the ground once they are. Um, okay. I'm trying to see what I can do with this one. And... Pirate. Oh, my dog. Anyways, there's always something going on. So that's basically what I'm doing. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So I just thought I'd mention that the varieties that I got are with the Wisconsin. This is just like a red potato. And then this one I believe is called, um, oh no, this is the Red Norland. And this one is just a Minnesota, it doesn't even say the the brand, but it's just a um, yellow potato, which are my favorite. So 
I love yellow potatoes because for me, I can do mashed potatoes, fried potatoes. <laughs> I can do um, pretty much everything with a yellow potato and I love them way more than I do. Um, yeah, see, this one's kind of soft, so I might not even mess with that one. Yeah, so like an old russet potato, I heard store longer and the, those ones, um, even though they store longer, they take a little bit longer to grow. They call them, I guess what you would say is a longer season uh, potato. So yeah, this one, I don't know if you guys can tell, but they don't really have too much growing. So you come over here to these potatoes, <laughs> they are already ready to sprout. So I'm gonna be able to cut that a little bit easier. It's easier to see the eyes as it is on these ones where it's a little bit harder to see um, what I'm looking for. Now, can you take a grocery store potato and plant it in the ground? Um, yeah, and you can do that with pretty much any vegetable or fruit that you get. If you collect the seeds, you can plant it. It's just that a lot of people don't recommend it, especially if you're trying to grow organically because a lot of times um, when you buy from the store, they are sprayed with stuff or how, or even if they say organic, they uh, could be sprayed with uh, some sort of hormone to help them grow faster um, to get them out into the stores. So they always say, you know, go for, it's, it's just better to start to grow your own food from seed. Even when you're getting a potato, um, try to buy something that says, um, you know, certified <laughs> seed potato. Um, this one I might be able to get quite a bit out of here. I just gotta do this smart because it's, these little things are. I feel like it's weird because you're cutting them and they're, they're not gonna be even. They're not gonna be perfect. <laughs> they certainly are not. <laughs> and see this little guy is so tiny. I could probably just stick this whole thing right in the ground. That's probably what I'm gonna do actually, even though I could cut it if I wanted to. And this one's soft, so I'm, I don't even know if I'm gonna put that in the ground. This one has a little bit more growth in it. So I can try to cut this off. Maybe right there. Right there. Definitely not a pro, guys. Like I said, this is my first time, so take what I'm saying with a grain of salt because I am not a professional. Um, but I am a strong believer in trying it out for yourself, <laughs> seeing what works and what doesn't. Turn this around this way because those ones are done. And I'm going to let these guys heal over. I'm going to stand up for a second, so sorry if you're getting a bad angle, but they just, uh, yeah, oh, these are super dirty, <laughs> super, super dirty. So I will let you guys know how these turn out because like I said, these ones are from Tractor Supply and I, a lot of times people will say, um, you know, try to order them online, sometimes ordering, buying things from big box stores because it sits on a shelf for so long. Um, you might not have as great a success as you would um, maybe buying them online from someone that does it professionally. Now look at that one. I'm gonna cut all of this out because I don't want that to affect the growth <laughs> of my potatoes. I definitely do not, you know what, I'm just gonna cut all this off. And I'm gonna set those aside and see if the chickens want that. They might not want those, but there's another little one. Set that one aside. But yeah, just, it's a good thing to, to cut these out. See what we're working with here. And then, you know, I was kind of, I was considering leaving some, um, I do have some in my refrigerator. I might just pull those out just to see how they compare to these ones that I bought at the store. 
Um, like I said, I have not ordered seed potatoes online from a uh, breakable wool company. <laughs> but, you know, it's something that people do and they, they swear by it. Um, these, I just happened to see them there. They were a good price and I wanted to try them out. I did go ahead and buy some um, grow bags. I have like animals all over the place. Um, from Amazon. Now these are not grow bag, uh, I guess, I don't know. I don't know what brand they are, but they're 30 gallons. They're pretty big. I chose to get these to put the potatoes in as opposed to putting them in one of the new raised beds that my husband built. You're probably thinking you're crazy. You guys just built all those garden beds. Why wouldn't you put these in there? Now I totally could. Um, however, again, from just watching tons of videos and tons of research, I have learned that potatoes, digging them up can be quite a messy job. And um, I haven't really shown you guys too much of the uh, rocks that we put in, but they're river rock and I don't want to get dirt all over them, even though I know it's going to in the long run because it's in a garden. However, I want to try to keep it um, as nice as possible. <laughs> and I just feel like um, if I... I'm digging out potatoes. I'm going to be making such a big old mess and I don't really want to do that. So I'm just going to <laughs> put them in the grow bags and that way I can just kind of pull them out and put them somewhere else and just dump them out um, easier to grab the potatoes at harvest time, right? So, oh my God, I apologize for my hair. It is always just like I have this really thick, unmanageable hair sometimes and it drives me crazy. Like drives me crazy beyond belief. So I am just going to sit here and grow and grow, cut and cut my potatoes because that's just what we're doing today. We're just going to cut potatoes. And like I said, I'm going to see how long these take to heal over. Um, again, because I am in such a dry climate, they shouldn't take too long um, at all is what I'm thinking. So, yep, 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 yep. If I end up putting these in the raised beds, then I will be sure to show you guys. Um, I'm not gonna plant these today. Like I said, I'm going to just do my chitting and um, let them heal over. And then I will get back to you guys as far as, um, the rest of the video goes it this is pretty much what you are going to get because I don't have too much videos planned other than uh, this today because not much is going on um, I did replace one of my cherry trees if you guys have been following along as far as um, my orchard goes I had um, one, two, about three trees that I needed to replace since last season. Um, my, my Royal Anne, I believe it's Royal Anne cherry tree didn't make it. And it is, uh, I don't know what happened to it. I'm not too familiar with cherries. I've never grown a cherry tree. Um, my black tartan is beautiful. It's still growing. It's budding up but my Royal Anne just did not want to make it this year. So I had to replace it. I actually got a Cap Kaplan cherry is what I think it's called. Um, it's actually originated from Mexico. So it's a little bit more drought tolerant than I would say um, most cherries because a lot of cherry trees, a lot of people don't grow them in Southern states because cherries need, um, a minimum usually of like seven to 800 hours of freeze temp. Um, freeze hours is what they call them. So we're just, we're gonna see how it works. But because the capital, I hope I'm saying it right, Capelin cherry is originates in Mexico. It's actually one of the, um, like, I guess more heat tolerant cherry trees that they had out there in the market which um, is actually not too popular. 
but in California, <laughs> it's actually more popular because uh, we do have hotter climates, um, usually. And it's a little bit more drought tolerant than a cherry tree because usually cherry trees need to be watered um, regularly for them to give you, you know, a good yield. Um, because we did get a lot of freeze temps and it was a cold winter and we did get some snow on the ground. I'm hopeful that my black tarta tartanian, I, I don't know if I'm saying these names right, but my black tartian or whatever cherry tree should be happy. And I'm hoping that because this is technically its third year that I should be getting a yield from them this year, but we will see. It is hard to say because <laughs> I have, you guys are learning as I'm learning. I am not a professional at gardening, even though I've done it for quite a few years, my vegetable garden, by all means, just, I'm still learning every day. Um, because yeah, yeah, this one is kind of just going to the chickens. So wasn't too many eyes on that one. <sighs> I'm just trying to divide them as best as I can. And you're probably thinking, what are you doing, lady? You are just over cutting <laughs> those potatoes. I promise you, this is what they say to do. Um, if you guys are scared to cut things and prune things back, I'm right with you. <laughs> I am definitely one of those people that is hesitant when it comes to pruning trees and stuff. Um, although I've been pretty um, consistent with it for my orchard because I'm definitely don't want I definitely don't want them to get too big to where I can't like harvest anything from them because it can get really hard um, a lot of these trees even though they say semi dwarf can get up to 15 20 feet tall and then you're gonna have to get a ladder um, in the future to start uh, harvesting fruit and you know me being five three <laughs> <laughs> it's not always an easy thing to do. So <laughs> to make things easier, I am just going to try to keep them pruned pretty light, um, keeping consistent with the size because I don't want them to get too big and out of control that I don't, I can't get, I can't keep a hold of them. Is that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. This one is going to be difficult. This one has, this one has a ton of eyes on it. Super, super ton of eyes on this guy. I'm not gonna overcut that one. I'm gonna see how it does like that. This is all an experience. <laughs> We're experimenting here, people. So just remember that. Um, you try it out. If it doesn't work, you try it differently the next season. So there you go. I've got, I have more than doubled my crop for my potatoes. They are gonna stay here in my greenhouse and just heal over. And hopefully, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna be maybe three days, three, four days at the most because of where we're at. Um, I just, I can't imagine them taking too long to dry out. So I'm gonna try to keep them a little bit separated so they can air out and they don't, you know, they don't, proud each other so yeah so anyways that is what <laughs> is going on around here um, the farm animals are great I know I didn't do really any updates here on my channel but we did have baby goats um, Roslyn and Crystal both had twins just like last year um, Roslyn had uh, two girls and just like last year Crystal had a boy and a girl so, uh, you know, even this is a different buck. So it's kind of crazy how it just kind of worked out the same. Um, I have unfortunately been sick for the past like three weeks, it feels like, and I just haven't had a chance to milk them yet. My plan was to start around two weeks to start milking Roslyn. And then I started getting really bad sinus and congestion pressure. Um, and just a whole other bunch of stuff with that. So I've kind of just finding myself in bed a lot and I don't know, it could be to do with the weather as well, 
but it's just been one thing after another. I've been to a few doctors and it's just come down to um, taking care of myself and myself comes first. <laughs> Although I do want to get um, out, I do want to milk my goats and that is a priority, but you know, I have to put myself first and if not getting to milk the goats yet <laughs> for a couple weeks, then oh well. So um, hopefully today I can get out there. I just have to pull out the kennel so that I can separate the babies at night. And that's kind of just been the big thing. It's been so ugly. I just haven't been wanting to drag out the kennel to the barn, um, to separate the baby goats because I don't want to make it worse and get more sick. But because I'm feeling a little better during the day, like I should go grab it right now. <laughs> Things should be fine. So that's what's going on. On another note, I am needing desperately to plant my cabbage and my Brussels sprouts into my garden beds, which uh, I will, I showed you guys in the last video. They look so good, but I'm having issues. Obviously, you can tell roots are coming through. These guys are like dying to be plant replanted. So that's what I'm going to try to do today. Oh, there's my hair tie. I knew I'd find it. So let me show you guys. Over here, that pirate is digging in. He's not supposed to be in there. Um, this is actually the bed I'm going to put them in because it does get a little bit of shade during the day. Um, I'm going to go to the store right now and go pick up some soil so I can level this out. The plan is to put the soil at least to where that line is of the stain um yeah fill it up we took out i don't know if you guys follow me at all on instagram but i mentioned that we cleaned out the buck pen and it pretty much just about filled up all eight of these beds um obviously we're going to top it off with some good potting soil um garden bed soil vegetable soil whatever it's not garden soil but you know what i mean so that the plants have a chance now is this the um most perfect filler to put into your garden bed no um using a lot of the hay and um you know this is just compacted bedding and you know um animal compost um it's going to be very uh, nutrient dense with a lot of nitrogen, but it's okay because I think we're going to mix it in a little bit. And like I said, it's been there for a while, so it's not fresh. Um, but if you guys do remember, I do live in a dry climate. I live in the high desert, so our natural soil is super sandy, which most plants like, but it is a pain in the butt to keep things hydrated in the summertime. So I'm kind of hoping that this will retain some water on the bottom of this bed so that it's not just seeping all the way through the bottom. And then, you know, as you can see, we have all of our rocks down, which we were on the fence about in the beginning because it's just a long story the company sent over just a mix of sizes we ordered one size they were supposed to technically be all this size but we ended up getting huge huge ones we ended up making a big pile of huge rocks um you know there's big tiny ones so overall it worked out but we were not happy at first um again just to help suppress weeds because we get really bad tumbleweeds and puncture vine and all sorts of nasty weeds. So yeah, so that's it. Hope you guys uh, liked my updates. And once again, we are in the vegetable garden. I have a feeling that a lot of videos coming up are going to be with my growing in the garden and like what I'm going to be planting. Um, like I said, I'm going to go run to Lowe's and go pick up some soil. Um, I gonna have to just take my time filling up each bed one at a time because as you know if you know as gardeners that soil can be one of the most expensive things <laughs> that you buy for your garden because seeds are super cheap but filling in those pot, um, garden beds can be quite expensive so um, that's where I'm gonna go right now fill up the bed and then maybe I'll film planting <laughs> my first bed and that'll be my next video so hope you guys enjoyed this just a little something a little different today and i'll see you guys in the next one bye